all right then welcome back everyone let's solve this question or a grasshopper now this is an easy question frankly but uh, you need to have some good observation skills <coughs> the question is very easy but uh, uh, this shows like why you should not uh, jump to figuring out the solution you have to practice some patience if you have like have some good observation skills and uh, practice some patience then uh, the solution will be right in front of you you just have to wait for it okay so this question is a classical example of that so yeah so i hope you read the question once i'll quickly read it for you so what happens is this grasshopper is located at this coordinate uh, x0 and at every minute uh, basically after i minutes this grasshopper makes a jump of exactly i now if it is standing at even coordinate it jumps to the left that is uh, if it is at some coordinate let's say x right now uh, x x okay so this x is even then after this ith minute it's going to go left x minus i and if this x is odd it's going to go right uh, the point is after first minute it's going to make the jump of uh, 1 after second minute it's going to make a jump of 2 depending on what is the parity of this x that is whether it is odd or even it's going to decide whether i have to go left or right and so the question uh, like is simple it, this grasshopper is standing as x0 and after i minutes this grasshopper makes a jump of i basically after first minute jump of 1 second minute jump of 2 third minute jump of 3 and depending on where the grasshopper is before the jump basically if it is right now standing at 7 uh, 7 and the next is let's say after third minute the third minute has to make a jump of 3 but since this 7 is odd it's going to go to uh, 10 okay so that's what it is fine and uh, what we have to do here is what we are given is we are given the initial coordinate x naught of this grasshopper and n the number of jumps basically yeah that's what is given right after number of jumps or they have said like after n minutes right uh, like they have asked you to uh, print the coordinate of the point the grasshopper will be at after making n jumps or in other words after uh, n minutes right because uh, after one minute it will, make, it will make one jump after two minutes it will make two jumps so after n jumps of course n minutes have passed right so the question uh, is simple i'll write it out uh, question in simple words find the coordinate and the coordinate after n minutes that's what you have okay so after uh, the coordinate of the grasshopper after n minutes and the only rule that is followed is at every i at a minute after a minute i it makes a jump of i okay but if it is standing at if it is standing at even it's going to make a jump to the left if it is standing at even it's going to make a jump to the left if it's standing at all it's going to make a jump to the right okay fine so that's the question fine so how do you approach this question uh, you can see here right it's all about uh you have to make some jumps and all uh so it's a it, like since we are given a coordinate axis here it uh it seems to be a mathematical question right and i guess the constraints are also pretty high so of course you cannot simulate the jumps right the constraints are 10 power 14 so first of all uh, that gives you a hint you have to use long long okay and then you cannot do simulation you cannot simulate uh, the jumps because uh, you cannot do more than nearly 10 power 7 operations okay so yeah we have to figure out something there will be some observation required in the jumps fine so what we are given we are given uh, x naught the initial position of grasshopper and uh, the number of jumps so basically after this minutes what is the coordinate of grasshopper that's what you have to find okay uh, now what like uh, the jumps depend upon whether this uh, like whether the coordinate is even or odd right so the decision our decision is based on a uh, parity right so parity of the coordinate parity of the current coordinate right so a decision is affected by this okay if it is affected by that uh, why not i try different values of x naught one odd value and one even value then i might be able to make some observation right so that's uh, what you can do yeah right so since our decision depends on the parity of a coordinate of course it is well uh, to look at one example of x naught when it's odd and one example when x naught is it's even right so yeah let's uh, do it then okay what value of uh, like so basically you got the point you have to first take an example when x naught is even okay and then you have to take an example x naught is odd so let's just first deal with this case x naught is even let's take an even value of x naught uh, what is the simplest value uh, let's start with zero fine we can take it so let's say x naught is zero okay it's an even guy right okay fine let's see how it goes so initially the grasshopper is at zero right so initially the grasshopper is at zero fine after first minute since it is an even coordinate it will go to minus one right so after first minute uh, since the even coordinate it will go to minus one now after second minute it has to make a jump of two it has to make a jump of two since this is odd since this is odd it's going to make jump towards right so minus one plus two so i'll write here minus one plus two one right so th three minutes have passed uh, like basically two minutes have passed right so this is after first minute this is after second minute now at the third minute it has to make a jump of three it is still odd it is still odd uh, so it will be four right okay now uh, four basically first minute second minute third minute Maybe I can write down the minutes here, so it will be easier for you. So three minutes have passed. Okay, first minute, second minute, third minute. Now let's say what happens at the fourth minute. At the fourth minute, the fourth minute has to make a jump of four. Since it is even, it's gonna go back four steps. So again, uh, we are gonna reach here at zero. Fine. So now four minutes have passed, so we are at zero. Now what happens at the fifth minute? At the fifth minute, at the fifth minute. Now currently it is at even. Currently it is at even, so it has to make a jump back, basically leftwards. So minus five. Okay, fine. Five minutes have passed. Now sixth minute. Now what? uh so the sixth minute it, it has to make a jump of six it has to make a jump of six since it is odd since minus five is odd it's going to make jump forward basically positive direction so this will again be one okay now seventh minute now seventh minute seventh minute means it has to make a jump of seven 
Of course, uh, since one is odd, it's gonna make jump in the right direction. So it will be eight here. Fine. So okay, good. Now eighth minute. Now it has to make a jump. Right now it is uh, at eight. So of course it has, it will jump back. Right. Eighth minute it, it has to make a jump of eight. And since we are at even position, it will go back. So again we are at zero. Okay, fine. We are seeing something. Let's go on. Uh, let's uh, simulate some more. Okay. So now ninth minute. So it has, it has to make a jump of nine. But since we are at even, it will be minus nine. Right. Uh, go back. Go to the left. Now at the tenth minute. The tenth minute it has to make a jump of ten. So again, since it is minus nine is odd, minus nine plus ten, one. Okay, fine. Ten minute gone. Now at eleventh minute. So after eleventh minute, we are at nine. So right now it is standing as one, which is odd. So of course it will be twelve. After twelfth minute. Okay. So now it has to make a jump of twelve. Starting it is standing at twelve. So it's even. So it has to go left. Again landing at zero. Fine. Now the end of thirteenth minute. It's even. So minus thirteen. Fine. And uh, similarly, uh, now. The end of 14th minute. The standing is 13. Odd number. It has to make a jump of 14. So again at 1. Okay. Now at the end of 15th minute. 15th minute. Standing at 1. Odd. It will be 16. Okay. So you're already seeing some pattern here. If you're not seeing some pattern, uh, let's just write down the what are the basically final destination after some minutes. So this 0 is after 0th minute. This is after 1st minute. This is after 2nd minute. This is after 3rd minute. This is after 4th minute. 5th minute. 6th minute. 7th minute. 8th minute. 9th minute. 10th minute. 11th minute. 12th minute. 13th minute, 14th minute, and 15th minute. Let's so have just written down the what is the position of grasshopper. Uh, when it starts from zero, when it starts from zero, after one minute, like from after zero till 15 minute. That's what I've written. Now, can you make some observations here? Can you make some observations here? You are seeing one thing here. You are seeing one thing here. Observe one thing. Uh, just observe this column. What are you observing? If n, basically, uh, if n minutes have passed, or basically you have made n jumps, if n mod 4 is equal equals to zero, then your final destination, let me just call it final destination, point, call it D, okay? So maybe I can call the final coordinate as D. You can make D equals to 0, right? That's what you're seeing. After 0 minute have passed, 4 minute have passed, 8 minute have passed, 12 minute have passed. That is, after some fourth, basically, if uh, some multiple of 4 minutes have passed, some multiple of 4 minutes have passed, then you are at the coordinate 0, right? Fine. Now what else you are seeing? After first minute, it's minus 1. After fifth minute, it's minus 5. After ninth minute, it's minus 9. After 13th minute, it's uh, minus 13. Okay, maybe if that's somewhat difficult for you to observe. Observe this. After second minute, uh, after second minute has passed, it's one. After six minute has passed, it's one. After tenth minute has passed, it's one. After fourteenth minute has passed, it's one. So what is common between these two, six, ten, fourteen? Can you see it? Can you see it? Uh, see, just make a guess from it. If this was related to some multiple of four, can you see if this is related to some multiple of four? I guess you'll be able to see that uh, this two, six, ten, fourteen, when divided by four, leaves a remainder of two, right? So if n mod four leaves a remainder of 2, then d is 1, right? Similarly, 3 leaves a remainder, 3, 7 leaves a remainder, 3, 11 leaves a remainder, 3, 15 leaves a remainder, 3, when divided by 4. So, if n mod 4 is equal equals to 3, then final destination is what? If the physical limit is 3, then it's 4, 7, then it's 8, 11, then it's 12, 15, then it's 16. Then d is simply n plus 1, right? So, when n is, when n divided by 4, when n divided by 4 leaves a remainder of 3, leaves a remainder of 3, the D, basically the final destination, the final destination that you got is simply n plus 1, right? For 3, it's 4, for 7, it's 8, for 11, it's 12, 15, 16. Now, it won't be so difficult to observe this. So, this is the case when n mod 4, when number of minutes that have passed divided by 4 leaves a remainder of 1. What is the distance? What can you see here? For 1, it's minus 1, for 5, it's minus 5, for 9, it's minus 9, for 13, it's minus 13. So, D is simply minus n, right? So, these observations can you make? So, maybe I can uh, bring this here. Okay, so this calculation, maybe I can put. Okay, fine. So this is that, right? So what you did is you just did a simple dry run when the initial coordinate was zero and what was happening after every minute. So you simply found out that when the number of minutes that have passed is a multiple of four, your final destination is simply coordinate zero. When the minutes that have passed is a multiple of, when, when minutes that have passed, when divided by four leaves a remainder of one, then the final destination is minus n. When it leaves a remainder of two, the destination, basically final coordinate is one. When it leaves a remainder of three, the destination is simply n plus one. Okay, so you got the answer for when you're starting from x equals to zero. Now, can we generalize it for even numbers? Can we generalize it for even numbers? Let's see. Now, what happens if there is some even number? So, how do you write even numbers, by the way, first? Uh, so, even numbers can be represented like this, right? So, 2p. Any even number can be represented like this, 2p. Fine. So, let's just take any even number here. Uh, let's uh, take an even number. Maybe uh, I can take even, even number like 4. Okay. Even number like 4. Let's just take 2p equals to 4. Okay. Even number like 4. Can you write uh, 4 like 4 plus 0? You can write, like 4, 4 plus 0. So, we are initially starting from 4 plus 0. We're initially starting from 4 plus 0. Notice one thing here, uh, this entire thing is even, right? 4 plus 0, this entire thing is even. Fine. 
After first minute, the zero will become minus one. After second minute, that minus one will again become one. After third minute, that one will become four. Okay, why is the, why is that working? Is let's see. Okay, so initially we are starting with four plus zero, right? It's even. It's even. So after first minute, what needs to happen? It has to go back one step. So it will be still four minus one. After second minute, after second minute, what happens? Four minus one is three. Four minus one is three. It has to go front two steps. So again, you have four plus one, right? Now after third minute, it's five, right? Uh, it's five. So after third minute, you have to go forward three steps. So it is still four plus four. Five plus three is eight. Four plus four. Okay. Now every, everything is simple here, right? See, uh, if it is an even number, you can represent it like this: two p plus zero. Okay. The parity of this guy is still even. The parity, like the parity of this guy is even. So what happens is the same directions will be followed. Basically, you have you can write it like two p plus zero, right? So the zero will change to minus one, minus one, then one, then uh, this four, then uh, again zero. So the zero will first into zero, then minus one, then one, four, then zero, minus five, one, eight. 0 minus 9, 1, 12, 0 minus 13, 1, 16. So maybe you can trace it out for yourself. Uh, I'll leave it an exercise to you. But if it is any even number, if it is any even number, the answer is still x0 plus d only. And it's not very difficult thing to observe. Why? Because the parity is still same, right? For any even number you start off with, initially you can write it like this x0, basically x0 plus 0. The 0 will change to minus 1, minus 1 will change to 1, and 1 will change to 4. Why I'm saying it, this, this works is because the parity is not changing. See, if initially it was uh, 4 plus 0 is even, here, 4 plus 0 is even, after making one step, after making a one step backward, after making one step backward, it will be odd. So definitely you are going to make, definitely you are going to go forward now, right? And similarly, you are again going to go forward. So what I'm saying is the parity, basically the movement's direction is not going to change. If you observe one thing here, movement's direction, movement's direction, movement's direction doesn't change. Okay. If x0 is even, if it is not zero, if x0 is even, the movement's direction doesn't change. That's why your answer is x0 plus d. What is this d? This d is basically the final coordinate that you will end up with when you start with x0 equals to 0. And it's not a very difficult thing to observe. You can maybe uh, trace it out for yourself here and you'll get the same result. Okay. So I will leave that an exercise to you. Fine. Okay. So that you can check for yourself. So if x0 is even, your answer is simply x0 plus d. And what is this d? This d is basically the final coordinate, the final coordinate that you'll reach when you start with x0 equals to 0. Now let's Fine. consider the case where x0 is odd. Now for those with good observation skills, if you can make that observation that when the parity of this x0 changes, the parity of x0 changes, you're going to still make the uh, jump same basically the magnitude of the jumps is still gonna be same one two three so on right only the direction is gonna be reversed right so if x naught is even this is your basically card right this is how but this is what happens after end after the end of every minute this is what happens now if x naught is odd what will happen is again like the jumps will happen in similar fashion it's just the parity of the final destination is gonna be reversed if you can make that observation it's good that is of course it's obvious right so initially if you went left then right left right so basically i don't know how we are going here uh, we are starting with the even guy so first we are going left then uh i guess we are going right left so on right so right left right left so on but if it is odd then you are gonna first go right then left so what i'm saying is if you don't get it see if, if your moves are like this if what if your moves are like this left right left right so on something like that if this was the case when x naught is even now when x naught is odd only the direction is gonna change right right left then uh, again right so if it was left, it will be right here. If it is right here, it will be left here. If it is left, then it will be right here. If it is right, then it will be left here. Only the direction is going to change. That is the final destination. The final destination that you lie on, that you lie on, will still be the same with the sign being reversed. So instead of the zero, you land at minus zero. So it's fine. It's still a zero only. Instead of this n, you will lie in minus of minus n. That is plus n. Instead of this one, you will end up in minus one. And instead of this n plus one, you will end up in minus n plus one. And this happens because only the direction of uh, the jumps is reversed, right? But the amount of jump that you're making is still same. Right, there should be n plus one. Fine. So yeah, so that means when it is a multiple of four, the zero becomes minus zero. So basically, it's still zero. This uh, minus n becomes plus n. This one becomes minus one, and this n plus one becomes a uh, minus n plus one. This is a uh, what will happen. So what I'm saying is, this our final answer would be x naught minus d. Okay. So this is what it will be. If you are not able to see it, uh, let's just see an example. If you are able to observe it, then the video is over. You can directly skip to the part of, for the code. Otherwise, let's just see how it works. Okay. So x naught is odd. Let's take a very simple example. Uh, let's start with one only. Let's start with one only. So right now the minute is zero. Now let's see what happens after first minute. After first minute, after first minute, this one is odd, right? So this will become two, right? Let's see what happens after second minute. It will become, it will become zero. Let's see what happens after third minute. What happens after third minute? So it's even, right? So it will become minus three, right? Now let's see what happens after fourth minute. Let's see what happens after fourth minute. Minus three, odd, four. So again one. Now let's see what happens after fifth minute. So one plus five is what? Six. One plus five is six. And uh, 
Fine. So let's see what happens after six minutes. Six is even. Six jump back. So zero. Then uh, let's see what happens after seventh minute. Let's have what happens after seventh minute. So seven, right? So zero minus seven. Right. Similarly, uh, this will be one. This will be one. This will be ten. This will be zero again, and this will be minus eleven. Right. So if I write the minutes above, it will be easier to see. This is one minute, two minute. Sorry. After zeroth minute, one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, fifth minute, sixth minute, seventh minute. Eighth minute, ninth minute, tenth minute, eleventh minute. Now observe one thing here. What is this? This is one minus one, right? This is one minus this is one minus zero, right? This is one minus zero. What is this? This is one plus n, right? One plus n. N is basically the minutes have passed. So one plus one, one plus five, one plus nine, right? So what is one? This is one is basically the initial coordinate you were at. Okay. So one plus n. So in other words, one minus minus n, right? Now what is this? What is this? This is one minus one. This is one minus one. So from this, just just relate with this guys, okay? Just relate this, relate it with this. It is one minus one. Fine. What is this? What is this? This is one minus n plus one. If you observe, one minus four, one minus eight, one minus twelve. So if you relate it with this, you are observing one thing. Only the direction, only the parity is changing, guys. This is minus one. This is minus n plus one. This is minus one. This is a uh, minus minus n. This is really plus n, and this is minus zero. But it doesn't really matter. So all in all, uh. Since this is a purely observation-based question, uh, it, it was a little bit difficult for me to show you. I hope I was able to show you the observation that you are supposed to make. So all in all, if x not is odd, your answer is x not minus d, right? So if I can write the pseudo code here, pseudo, pseudo code here, if x not is even, if x not is even, your answer is simply x not plus d. Else, your answer is x not minus d. And what is this d? This d is basically the final coordinate that you land up with when you start with x not equals to zero. Okay. So this is your pseudo code and. Uh, Yeah, that's that. Let's just quickly code it up. Okay, guys, uh, let's uh, quickly code it up. So I've just taken the input x n, and uh, now I need to find the d. Uh, what is this d? Uh, the final coordinate when you start from uh, you can say final coordinate when uh, x is zero, when x is zero, and n is n, right? So this is what you want to find out. So again, write a if else ladder or switch will be good here, right? So I'll just write a switch here. Switch n mod four because everything depends upon uh, whether this what are the remainders, uh, what are the remainders that you get when you try to divide n by four, right? So the first case would be zero. If it is a uh, divisible by, if it is divisible by four, that is zeroth minute, fourth minute, then d would be, then d, d would be zero, and uh, break, right? Next case one, uh, when it gives a remainder one. So in this case, uh, the answer was what? What is my answer, right? Uh, break. So I'm not going to repeat this again and again because I guess I've explained this a lot of times. Thanks. And then uh, case two, case two, when it leaves a remainder two. In this case, uh, d was one, break. Okay, fine. And uh, the last case, case three, or maybe I can leave it as a default case as well. But fine. Case three. Then in this case, d was equal to uh, n n plus one, right? N plus one. So third minute it was four. Uh, seventh minute was eight, and so on, right? Break. Okay, so this is a switch case. So d will be assigned automatically depending on what is what is n mod four. And in the end, uh, what I need to check if uh, x is even or not, right? So I can just write if even of x. I need above. If even of x, simply print x plus d followed by new line. Else print what x minus d. Because still you will. Uh, Make the same amount of jumps, but the direction will be reversed. That's why I can see. Follow by another. Just quickly run it. So I think it works. Uh, let me just quickly see uh, in code forces. Yeah, it works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.